So let us just pray at this time. Father, we thank you for this evening. We want to thank you for this time that we have set aside to come to fellowship one with another. As we're about to get into Transformation Thursday, Father, I pray that you will take over, you will take full control. And I pray, God, that just as you always do, you will just show up and you will show up and everyone will leave here this evening mm -hmm. something. God Almighty, just have your way as we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So on Transformation Thursday, we've been having a good time. We have great topics and trust me, the speakers are excellent. And I am quite sure that this evening will not be any different because the man of God is going to give us what the Lord has downloaded in his spirit on the topic this afternoon, love under fire. I mean, what kind of topic, what kind of thing is this we're talking about? Love. Can love something so good be under fire? Well, we're going to talk about it this afternoon. So this afternoon to actually share with us in the session this afternoon is my elder. <laughs> Some persons here will say, is there elder too? But is my elder first? I don't care where I fall, but is my elder first, right, elder? You got that right. All right, say it and let them hear. Tell my next to you after this evening. No, no, man. The people who are in my circles are not people who, who get upset about anything. They understand their positions, and everybody okay. understands that they are first. All so right. this is the, this is this is the only this is the only um I don't want to use the word competition. That's not a very good word, but this is the only place where mm. everybody is first. You know, um, when you go to some churches. They tell you that um, this is a church where everybody is somebody. Well, yes. this is the setting where everybody is first. <laughs> awesome. So we're all first in a group of first, right? There, there you go. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Elder. So I want to tell you a little bit about my elder this afternoon. No, I when I when I was looking at it enough, Elder, I said, you got saved 1980. Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. A long, long time ago. I won't even tell you before when, but <laughs> <laughs> you got saved a long time ago. Now, Elder, he is the pastor. He has responsibilities for the fire baptized holiness church of God in Harmony Hall. No, I don't know about you, but every fire baptized belongs to Elder Gibson Wallace. So really? he's responsible for the one at in St. Mary. Now, Elder wear a whole lot of hats. He was actually, at one point, he was choir director. At one point, he was in charge of religious education at his church. He presently, he also, he is a justice of the peace. He's a marriage officer. Can I tell you, he is, what, what should I say? You're going to school and do, do, do a lot of devotion. You're a devotionite. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's a devotion. I think, I, think I like that one. <laughs> but he is the elder. He and and he he is responsible for churches actually in USA and Jamaica, right, sir? No, the Virgin the Virgin Islands. If you say USA, you have the mainland, and you have the Virgin Island. We have a work in the Virgin Island. So um, I I I like to use the word supervisor. They. Let me let me say this before I share it in the church's group. The the leaders say um ruling elder. Um I say district elder, please don't read me a bishop. <laughs> <laughs> he won't, he won't. <laughs> All right. No, elder has been married for 32 years. Yes, mama. He's married to Miriam Wallace. And mm. he has three beautiful girls. You're talking German. And he has the most handsome son in the world. <laughs> Is that right? That's our elder. So this afternoon, elder, oh, as we sure. get started this afternoon on the topic, love under fire. I want you to just give me your open comments. You know what you thought about it when you heard the topic and what came to mind, love under fire. All right. Um, th there's, a, there's, a, there's a young lady who made a comment once in, in church. And it's, it's the first I've heard it and I've never heard anybody saying it again. And when we talk about love under fire, um, that comment came right back to me, that love is an overrated word. 
that that's what she 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 said and i understood why she said that because in the true sense she is really saying that we really have not as a people define love and we know that when you love there are things that are going to affect that love um it is going to cause it to be devalued um, in some instances, in other areas, it is going to cause it to die. So there's another D again, the teacher in you. <laughs> it is it's going to be devalued or die. And, and so um, because we are we are creatures that are created with the capacity to love and to receive love, anything at all that God has ordained for us is always going to come under attack by the end. So any area of our lives, whether it has to do with marriage, um, relationship with your children, relationship with your siblings, relationship with your co-workers, relationship with your church folks, mm -hmm. it's yeah. always going to come under attack from the enemy. So love is always under fire. It is nothing new. Mm -hmm. It is not anything that there is going to be any solution to. Love is always going to be under fire. So that, that was where my thinking was. Okay. But so you're here talking about love, love, love. And it is so true that if I should ask all the 20 persons on, on Zoom right here now, what is love? I mean, I think maybe I would get a whole lot of different answers. But I want you to tell me, sir, what in your definition, what is love? Um, You know, when, when I was writing this down so that I don't forget that my ripe old age, um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a young lady um who sings a song and um her name is tina turner and i'm quite sure that those you're too young to know this though but um you know, know the person the, per know. The, 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 the persons the persons who are my age and a little <laughs> older and a, and a tidbit under my age there's a song that she asked what's love got to do with it sir, and then she that, okay <laughs> or somebody tell her about it they don't know nothing <laughs> then she um she had her own definition for love. She said it's a second-hand emotion. emotion. And then she went as far as saying it's a sweet, old-fashioned notion. That's her word. But um, the thing is that if we're going to talk about love, it's really having affection for someone, and I'm leaving it at someone, or also from a light place. We can say love can be described as a liking for something. And that is why I come back to what I said, the young lady made mention that love is overrated because in the Greek, it is not loosely used like we use it. You will, you, um, you will, you will get up, um, Auntie Nikki, and say, boy, I'm in love red. And then somebody said, no, I'm in love red, I love yellow. And then somebody said, I love dogs. And somebody said, boy, I'm in like dog, I'm in love dog at all, I love cat. So yeah. is, is, that is how we use the word. In Our understanding of the word love is used loosely. But from, from the perspective of the Greek, they had, and we know that, they had different words mm -hmm. that they used to describe love, um, like eros, which speaks to the love between, you know, a male and a female, a sexual passion. The philia is the deep friendship, you know, like the people where you want to take picture with all the time when you see them and all them something there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the philia love. And then you have, you have what they call the ludus love, the playful love. And then we say the agape love is the love that God has for us. But really, it is really love for everyone. So if you look at it from the perspective of how we understand it in the Western world, um, and the Caribbean and over right here. So we're going to say that we love or we have a liking for something or if it is a relationship that you want to enter into, you will um, feel that it's an intense feeling or deep affection for someone. So from that perspective, that is what we say um, love is. But love is an action word. We'll talk about that a little later. Just remind me to make mention of that. Love is an action word. I'm going to jot that down, you know. Yes, mm -hmm. sir, please. So, sir, um, like how persons love the dog and the animal, do you think that there is degree of love then, degrees? I do believe, I do believe that because um, you, you will get up and say, boy, I love my teacher. And that's going to be very different from you saying, I really love my sister. That, that, that there's going to be that degree um, of, of, of love. Um, so, yes. I mean, you can't love an animal the same way you can love a human being. And Lord, there are some persons who love animals more than how they love human beings. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. I watched a show the other day, and the woman is as if her dog meant everything to her, and she loved her dog. 
And when her dog died, I mean, they had to co- bring her into counseling. <laughs> so it was like, and it's, I'm, it's, I'm, it's I'm, an, that's an, that's an intense feeling of deep affection. <laughs> <laughs> For the dog. <laughs> <laughs> So, sir, you t- you mentioned the Bible, though. What 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 does the Bible tell me? Some of the things that the Bible tells us about love as Christians. No, um, you know, it's interesting that today I was thinking, um, the, the different areas that 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 love is is um encouraged, and I was thinking about the children of Israel, just as we read the Lord's prayer. They had to be repeating, I think it's determined four, six, or six, four, one of them. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Um, you must love the Lord with right. all your heart, with okay. all your soul, and with all your might. I thought about that. And just as though when we were growing up, unlike maybe now, I, I still think it happens, like maybe in what we now call, what we, do, what we call it. It used to be a basic school. What is it? Early childhood. Early childhood. In America, they say kindergarten. Yes. Right. Um, when we were growing up, we were taught, um, you know, Oh, the, the Lord, what we call the Lord's Prayer. That for them was their Lord's Prayer. It was okay. something that they repeated every day because you realize that, or you know, that once you constantly repeat something, it becomes a part I of you. you. They, yeah. ha- they, they had, just as, oh, you know, whatever happened when we were in um, basic or kindergarten or early childhood or primary school, at the end of it, in devotion, we would have had to say, or Father who art in heaven, that's what they are to repeat. When you look at the Ten Commandments, the first four commandments, when you look at it from an underlying place, or you read between the lines, as Sister Patty um, will tell you, um, you know, in literature, they tell you that you must read between the lines. You don't see everything. <laughs> but in reading between the lines or looking at the commandments, mm-hmm. we probably have not observed this, but the first four commandments had to do with our love for God. So it had to do with our relationship with him. And then the next six had to, see, let me get the maths right, four and six. The next six (laughs) had to do with our relationship with each other as human beings. So love the Lord God. Um, uh, um, Thou shall have no other God before me. Don't take my name in vain. That kind of a thing. It is generated out of your love for God. But the others don't steal, don't kill, don't bear false witness, don't have bad mind and grudge and all them, something there. Those had to do with your love for your fellow men. Yeah. When you go into the New Testament and Jesus is now saying, I am writing a new commandment to you. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and your neighbor as yourself. So you see the principle, the same principle that was there for the Ten Commandments given in Exodus chapter 20, that you must love God first and then love people after. There is a correlation um, between that because the truth is, if you really have not learned how to love God, it is going to be very challenging to love people. And so that if we have a challenge with loving people, we should check our relationship in terms of our love for God because it is the love of God in us or the love that we have for God that will enable us to love some people who it can be very challenging to love. Oh, so because we, I, I am always told that you need to love yourself before you can love others. But now you're allowing us to understand that it's the love for God. So we need to have a love for God first. That's what you're saying, Elder. Definitely. That, that's a principle that is laid down, you know, and, I, and I, I brought that out from the Ten Commandments, and then I laid that out in something that Jesus said in giving another principle of loving. Because the truth is, you know, um, when we talk about love under fire, we can fall out of love with people. And I'm not just talking about marriage now. I'm talking about friendship because everybody on this platform know what it is to be let down. And when you are let down, it can affect how you love. But there are, there are those of us who are on the platform who have been seriously let down. And we have made a choice to love. And it is not because of we were made a better human than the one who having a challenge to love. But it's because we allow the love of God 
to help us to love that individual. So, and, and the truth is that loving God helps you to love yourself even better. Because when you love him and you know who you are in him, there are those who probably have low self-esteem. There are those who were abused. There are those who were abused verbally. And there might have been a challenge loving yourself. But as you grow to love the Lord and, um, and you understand who you are in him, it, it's, it's not going to be challenge, love, challenging to love other people and, and to love yourself. And th that loving of yourself is funny enough, you know. This morning I posted something because I think all the time and um, I, I, I'm selective about what I post. I post something on my, my, my status because the, the, the loving yourself, the, there has to be a distinction with being confident and with being arrogant because there are some people who quote unquote love themselves, but they are extremely arrogant. We're not talking about that. We're talking about confidence. So in loving God, it gives you an opportunity to love yourself, but we are mandated in the word of God to love our neighbors. And, and Auntie Nikki, you know, may I talk enough, you know, but it's funny when I was thinking about the whole matter of loving your neighbor, um, from, from a strict principle, your neighbor is the people who live next door to you or the person who you sit beside in the office. But if you look at it, yeah, man, uh, if you look at it from the, the, the principle of scriptures, yes. your neighbor sometimes is a dead stranger. Because we saw that on the Jericho Road. Them two men down. did not live beside each other. The, yeah, the, yeah. the Samaritan was a total stranger. As a matter of fact, stranger, not just in terms of his person, but, but his ethnicity. One was a Jew and one was a Samaritan. And in our Jamaican language, them no plan, boom, go align. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And, and so um, it, it, it's, it's a love of God in us that will cause us to be able to love others. All right, so, so sir, I, I'm seeing a, a, a G. I'm not sure if it's a question you want to ask or you're in agreement with something that was said. All right, but Elder, you, you made, you said something. A G, if you have a question, you can go ahead and put it in the chat so we, you don't forget it, you don't, we don't miss it. Oh yeah, I see, I see um, A G saying, good evening, everyone. I have a question, Ella. You can type that okay. in the chat, chat, and then we will um we will speak to that. Yes. But Ella, you said something about um you said that person we can fall out of love. I wanted to speak more about that because as Christians, when we are supposed to be loving, how is it that we fall out of love? Oh, I was trying to read some of the comments on, on Facebook, and there's one about the dog that I find extremely fascinating. Okay. Um anything at all we have they, they, i think the only thing that that does not depreciate is land <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry sister dicky but you understand this aspect of me more than a lot of people but um over over time over time um things can affect relationships and you don't feel the same way about an individual that you felt for them or how you felt towards them earlier in your life or your experience with them. So in that case, if you don't have, remember, we made mention of an intense feeling and a part of that intensity is not necessarily um, a, a, a sexual feeling, but a feeling of, of wanting. You wanting in the sense that you, you want to be in the presence of that person. You want to be in the friendship of that person. You want to have constant dialogue with that person. And we know we don't need any therapist to tell us this. We don't need to pull down any book. We don't need to Google anything. All of us on this platform have had persons who we have had intense friendship with. And love here does not necessarily mean a male-female relationship um, that, that, that intends to go you know, into something that is sexual or moving on to marriage or something like that. No, that's not what we're talking about. But we have, and there is that out of love too. We're not running away from that because the truth is that there are persons right now who are married and they are married by the books, but not married by practice. Theoretically, they are, but in a practical sense, they are not. They are disconnected and they are out of love. And we're not running away from that reality. Oh. Um, 
I, I see AG's question. I don't know when Nico, Nick, Auntie Nikki is going to be ready to ask that. All right. We're going to we're going to we're going to look at her question. And, and one second. Um, um Nolia did say this, which I think is very good. Offenses, offenses are unforgiveness. I think she probably meant offenses and unforgiveness can cause us to fall out of love. And she's right. That is so correct, sir. And and I, I would I would just move, I would I would um put a little thing before the off um the 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 offenses well i was going to say constant and consistent but some persons it just take one offense to cause them not to be in that situation anymore that is so true we can address the question but sir i think there was a question first to explain love or deep could that extreme love or deep affection for a dog be misplaced be a misplaced kind of love that was a question. That was um, the, 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 um deep 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 affection has to be sectionalized as far as I'm concerned. And it comes back to what I say, our misrepresentation of love. Um the love that that you have for your friend or your bestie is not the same love you would have had for your wife, but you're using the same word. Yes. And even in the story of um with peter and jesus i think that gives you the kind of explanation of the misrepresentation because when jesus asked him um peter peter do you agape me he said to him i feel you, you. <laughs> so even though jesus was asking him about a particular kind or level of love is misrepresentation you know, was Jesus asking him, do you love me in this way? And he was saying, so So even with the old dog thing, there are some people who are attached to their pets. Yes. They, they, I mean, I, I had a dog that got hit down and I couldn't tell my mother till the next morning because, you know, that was going to affect her. To God be the glory, she probably was not deeply, I mean, she was affected by the dog's death. But there are some people who really treat their dogs. If in, in yeah. our side of the world, we might not understand that. I mean, I went somewhere in, in, in Florida and when we look at the area that the dog is staying and the dog have a moon city and all of them, something there. And I said, top. <laughs> yes, yeah, so no. And and so maybe where we are, we don't understand that because our dog is outside. We go scrape out little bone, give them, you know, and then do something and we take broomstick and hit them. In some people's situation, that dog is treated like I, I'm, I'm a member of the family. That's true. So we have to understand the context. There is something about context, and we really have to understand it. Um, so, sir, we're going to take the first question that is in the chat. Can you love someone and not want to be around them because of how they treat you or their behavior? Is it yeah. resentment whenever you feel like that? Um, I, I don't think it is re resentment. It's being protective of yourself. But we can love people who hurt us. And the truth is that the people who really hurt us the most are the ones that we love. Is that so? Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. But but um, you can love people because love is a choice, you know. So, Loving so, someone is that so love. Two things you have to say. You say love is action and love is choice. So yeah. you will have to talk more about these two things, action and choice. All right. So so um coming to the question from AG, um. I love Auntie Nikki, and Auntie Nikki is always hurting me. But me love Auntie Nikki. And, you know, I it, it, it bothers me that I love her, and she is always hurting me. So sometimes to be protective of myself, me don't get in Auntie Nikki's present. I'm not resenting her. I'm being protective of myself. Because chances are Auntie Nikki might change. We don't know. Chances are she might change. So it's not being resentful, it's being protective of yourself. And 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 um the truth the truth is that as 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 someone says, love hurts, it, it really would hurt you to have that person hurting you, but you just have to be protective of yourself. <laughs> There's a cat story there. So so, sir, um, <laughs> sir, you have to share the story. 
At what story? No, I'm saying there's a cat story there. I happen to know a cat who has his own room and a queen size bed. <laughs> and I'm finding that fascinating. Who the fuck was this, sir? <laughs> Some of us don't even have queen size bed, sir. But can you, can you love someone from afar? I guess. <laughs> um, how, how do I answer that one? Yeah. Um, I don't want to be up in a space for you to hurt me, so <laughs> and I'm taking two steps back, but, but I love you. So maybe you can. It is it is funny, sir, that um I was taught and I and I hear it that when someone hurts you, when you really forgive them, it means that you're going to put yourself back in the position for them to hurt you again. You were just talking about protecting your, your, yourself. How is it that you would view that then? Because if you are going to put yourself back in the position to be hurt again, you're not protecting yourself. Um, Nick, Nick, one of the things I just started to talk about that, you know, um, the, all the ways of a man are right in his own eyes, but it is God who weighs his spirit. And I find that some things that we speak are not necessarily so because sometimes we are not even truthful to our own selves. So we have to understand whether we are resenting or protecting ourselves. We know when we are resenting people. You don't want a prophetic word. You don't want anybody throwing a prayer shawl over your head. You don't want anybody looking in a crystal ball. We know when we are being resentful and we know when we are protecting ourselves. Because one of the things, you know, is, 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 is interesting. Um, just last week, I was doing an exam and they were talking about one of the arguments for the existence of God. And one of the arguments is the moral argument that ingrained in all of us is the ability to distinguish or to decipher. Old people use them word again, Auntie Nikki, you don't know that word. You don't know about <laughs> decipher. You have to ask all of the big people there. The, 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 we are able to decipher between right and wrong. And you, can you can um, make an oral presentation of why you're not talking to that person, that you are being protective of yourself. And you, Auntie Nikki, genuinely know that you are not being protective of yourself, but that you are being in a malicious place. You are being, you are harboring and entertaining malice. So there is that situation where you have to be protective of you. And that is not malice. And there is that situation where you say you are being protective of yourself and you know that you are not being protective of yourself. You are harboring and entertaining and facilitating malice. And that ingrained morality that God has given to you, whether you see it or you unsee it, Baptist, Catholic, or in between, you know what it is. And that is why I started off by saying that all the ways of a man are right in his own eyes. Because we can present an argument to be right, you know. You and I can present, and we can be, we can craft something that looks so well and get our people to sympathize with us. But God knows what the truth is, and we also know what the truth is. Yes, Elder, I, I totally agree. So we're still on Transformation Thursday with Coach Cola, and our guest for tonight is Elder Gibson Wallace. And sir, I want to know, how do I know when somebody tell me that they love me, that they really love me, and they're not just saying it from me? <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> I, I, think, I think you are you are pulling me into the comment that was made earlier, <laughs> that love is an That's action not, word. Right. And, 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 and let me say this. Let me say this. I normally say that love is not love by what it says. It is love by what it does. Don't tell me that you love me prove that you love me and this is not now you taking me to a restaurant and buying me an expensive food for father's day hint hint <laughs> <laughs> um we, action is not measured by what you can do in a physical tangible sense i have to careful how i say that because that might be called into question but but when i say love is not love by what it says but love by what it does. What it does does not necessarily mean that Father's Day, my birthday, and Christmas, you have to buy me a gift because you can do that out of duty and you really don't love me. You can do that because you're trying to impress me. 
Are you trying to put, bring me on a guilt trip? Are you trying to impress somebody else? So when we say love is love by what it does, there are some people in my life that I know that they love me. And a part of loving me is rebuking me. Yes. A part of loving me. Look here, there, there is a, a friend of mine, I don't have to call her name because you would have seen her on a number of occasions on my status. We are doing, um, we had to go virtually for church and she's an administrative nurse. We went to high school together and she, she comes on to the programs I do and she will watch and after church, she would say to me, Gifton, I noticed that you had an altar call today. She's not trying to be a scribe or a Pharisee. She said, I noticed that you had an altar call today and there was too much bundling at the altar. You can't do that because <laughs> you don't know who is watching the program and you don't want to invite anybody to come to prosecute you. She said, I'm not a lawyer, I'm a nurse. She tell me that straight. She said, she, then she will call. She said, Gifton, you have to find a different way to do the offering. So don't let them come down the aisle and do that. She will talk about uh, no sharing of any mic. So we went out and we got mics. Now, that is not someone who is picking up money and gifts and is giving to me, but she's being protective of what I do in terms of ministry. So she's doing something and she's not doing that because she wants to be a bother or wants to impose on me her professional ethics. She's being protective of me. And I know that is born out of love. Yeah. There are other people who do that. I, I am, um, well, I was going to say I'm in school. As, I think I'm still there technically. <laughs> I should graduate in October. So technically I'm still there. And there are projects that I have to do. I don't know how to do, um, what do you call it? Something what you do with the slide and all them, something there. Um, oh, see, they're right there. So that's why I need you. That's why I have you. The younger brains to say all them, something there. And there are persons who I will go to them. Um, there's a mother, daughter, family, or friend that I have. I may go over them here and take over them house. I may sit down there and they say what you want and then do my stuff. That is born out of loving me. No, there are there are people now like two God picnic we may have where every year and Father's Day, Christmas, birthday, them give me gifts. And we know that is born out of love. So I'm just trying to say that there is a balance with what it does. And does doesn't have to be physical, tangible, something. Yeah. But 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 it it, it is it is it is an expression of really caring for and caring about you. So love is not love by what it says. It is love by what it does. You understand? And love is an action word. Don't tell me that you love me and you don't do. Um, persons, I'm, I'm, I'm involved in ministry. And, and the, 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 the truth is that you will know when the people who you serve love you. You will know. The little texts that ask you how you do. The little texts that tell you I'm praying for you. It's not, it's not by what it says. Is by what it does. It's an action word. You cannot love me and not do. It's not possible. And it means by me to cologne too. <laughs> it is coupled with actually doing. Yes. So, but uh, that means because persons can do and not love then. I said that earlier, I know. I said that earlier. Let me bring that into the yes. let me bring that let me bring that into marriage. Let me bring that into marriage. A man or a woman for that matter, because okay. you are coming with more money than us now. <laughs> that is what a life reality. We leave high school, we want to work. You all leave and go to university so to get the big degree job them. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Auntie Dickie. You should know. You should know that you were going to be running up into this before you invited me. On. All right, no good. No, I have it mute right now. So. <laughs> All right, look here, look here, Auntie Nikki. You will have in a relationship. Um, a man is showering a woman with a lot of gifts. One, because he can afford it. Two, because that is where his mind is, and and he's doing that sometimes out of duty. Or he is doing that because he really feels that sense of commitment to always be there showing the person with gifts. But 
that woman will tell you that the gift or the gifts does not mean as much to her as the man. So if she's getting the gifts and she don't have the man, she doesn't feel loved. As a matter of fact, she would prefer to have the man than the gifts. Mm -hmm. So even the handing of gifts, and that's one of the reasons why I did not, when I say love is an action word, I did not start off with any giving of gifts. Because the fact that somebody is giving you a gift don't mean that they love you. They can be giving you gifts out of duty. Ah. It might be a duty. It might be a ritual. Oh, it's our anniversary. Here's a bunch of rose. Sure. It's your birthday. Yeah. All right, let's go for dinner. What happened after that? How do you help me when I have, um, I'm under pressure at work and I have to come home and still cook for you sitting down in the bed or the city with your stomach getting large <laughs> watching football? Yeah, it's not, it's not by what it says, it's by what it does. Yeah. So love is an action word. Don't tell me you love me and you can't prove it. And the people that I know, who, and I'm going to get personal now, the people who love me are the ones who do. And not the ones who I don't want, I don't want the Peter love. When they're loving me from afar, I love my pastor, but me nobody heal him up. Heal me up. Me want to heal him. <laughs> I thrive on heal ups. <laughs> when you fall out of love if, like you're talking about marriage you, you touch marriage a bit and if you find that you're falling out of love with your partner what is it that you're going to do now what is your advice to that person who are falling out of love be, be honest to yourself because a lot of times you know there there is a the, the first time a young lady got up in church and testified and, and made mention of Kevin Downswell's song, When I Come to the End of Myself. She, that, that's, that, that's, that's just that section she mentioned. I never hear the father carry me part of it. So she was saying that, you know, I was at a place where I had to come to the end of myself. And that thing hit me like a ton of bricks. Because, number one, I did not know it was somebody's song. I thought it was just an idea. Because she, she's a brilliant young lady and she thinks outside of the box. So I thought it was her thinking. And until I heard the song that was ministering, um, you know, you have really reached a place where you are severely broken mm -hmm. and you are distorted and, and you don't know what to do. So you come to the end of yourself. You're asking the Lord to carry you. When I heard that song, coming to the end of myself means when I face who I am and I'm ready to deal with who I am. A lot of us will not correct some things because we have not dealt with who we are. We know that this is a situation and we have not dealt with it. We circumvent, we skirt around it, we make excuses. So in that case, it can't be dealt with. But if we, you will know, you know, because if you used to appreciate and always want to be in this person's presence, if you enjoy them, or you used to enjoy them when you are around them. I know it is ritualistic and, and, and just tolerant. You know that you are out. So it starts with confession. There is no restoration that happens outside of confession. And one of the reasons why a lot of relationships are not, are not fixed. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump now from fat, um, male, female to church. One of the reasons why a lot of our relationships when we are out of love whether it has to do with your marriage, you and your children, your church is not fixed. It's got, we have not been truthful. We have not come to the end of ourselves. We have not acknowledged that this is a situation or this is the case. And what we try to do is to cast blame on the other person. You will never fix anything like that. Even if you are the offended, do an introspection because some things that cause offense, we have made an active contribution to. It's just that we end up being the victim, but we have actively. So this situation, there, there, there's, there's, I remember, um, I've had real close friends. I mean, I tell us a close friends, close friends. And I remember one of my closest friends, we, I, I can remember just maybe one time in that friendship that we share that there was a conflict. And so one of the questions that arose in that conflict is, what did I do to contribute to this? 
Because like I told a group the other day, some things that we are blaming the enemy for is not the enemy, is the inner me. So some things that we're blaming the enemy for is not the enemy. And, and so there has to be a serious introspection. What did I do? Or did I do anything to contribute to this? And then we just go tell the Lord about it and then listen to what he has to say. Because or anything at all that has to do with resolution and restitution, God has the answer for it. But yeah. sometimes what God's answer is, is not what we want to hear. Sure. All the ways of a man are right in his own eyes. <laughs> no, Lisa, she like me. Thank you very <laughs> much, sister. No, Lisa, she like me. me like you too. <laughs> me like you back. Nolia is my classmate from Kingston Technical. She's in Canada. She didn't go to St. Andrew Technical. She, no, went to the, she, went, she went to the wrong school. <laughs> Not let me like you, but you went to the wrong school. <laughs> so you're saying, sir, that when we, we fall out of love in whatever kind of relationship, first you have to acknowledge. Yeah. So you must know when you fall out of love. Look, look, man, and, and, and we, you will never move past that falling out. If you do not acknowledge, acknowledgement leads to confession, and so confession to leads to repentance, mm -hmm. and repentance leads to restoration. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we want the restoration without acknowledging, without confessing. And Sister Nikki, a part of the confession is if me hurt him, if you talk to you, until let me do it, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and let me tell you something. We do an excellent job of telling somebody, boy, I mean, we did hurt our feelings, but. Me, me never feel that day there was not a good day for me. I will not tell Nikki that. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and it is the pride in us that causes that. That is one of the reasons why the word says pride goes before destruction. And destruction no means say you're going to drop in one hole and then I end up at hell. Destruction means say you might miss what could be an extremely beautiful relationship because of your pride. Yes, a true thing, sir. Look, look at the KT people. I'm running out on me. This now keep this evening here. <laughs> it, it, it are not keeping. It are not keep. <laughs> no. <laughs> you are still on transformation Thursday. That is something <laughs> join after. You are still on transformation Thursday with Coach Paula, sir. Guess what? So I have a son or a daughter, sir. That is not care how much. Can we love your children, them, don't, sir? Yes, man, without without any question. No care how what me do. The people always are hurt me. Talk truth, sir. What me I gonna do as a mother or a father now? Because I'm supposed to actually love them and bring them up in the fear and of the Lord and all of them things. How do I deal with that loving of that child when the child always are hurt me and everything we tell them to do them do the opposite? Um, you know, you know what one of the you know <laughs> hey look here now, sister Nikki, a deep, you're gonna deep right there. So no. <laughs> do you know, do you know that in scriptures, I'm going to answer this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make us answer this. Do you know that in scriptures we are referred to as the children of God? You see where I'm going with this? Do you know that God loves us unconditionally? Yes, sir. <laughs> Do you know that all when we mess up 40,000 million, trillion, billion, billion times, he has not given up on us? Yes, sir. Do you know that we are called to reflect him in how we deal with each other? Challenging, you know. Easier yeah. said than done. Yeah. Take it from eye and eye. But one of the things I'm finding out is that with the Holy Spirit's help, we can deal with some stuff, but most time we don't want him to help us. Because he's going to tell us what we don't want to hear. He's going to tell us what we don't want to hear. That's true, sir. Yeah, he's going to tell us what we don't want to hear. Because I want to, you know, maybe give them the right hand of fellowship. True, sir. That co-worker will always annoy you and that yeah. sister there, the church brother there. Sir, them no saying I like certain things and them keep on doing it. And then out of a love for God, you have to still love them, sir. 
and 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 and, and the, the truth is that um many times we see people and we don't see spirits but there are spirits that drive and determine the actions of people and that's one of the reasons why we are told that we are in warfare yes. but it's not fashion but and I, I this this is a scripture this is a scripture that all of us on this platform knows but this is a scripture that all of us on this platform forgets Auntie Nikki, this is a scripture that every <laughs> one of us on this platform know. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. But I say this without fear of successful contradiction. This is a scripture that all of us, including preacher me, on this platform forgets. We see people, we don't see spirit. When you offend me, I see you. That's true. I don't see no spirit. I want to get at you. I don't want to get at any spirit. I want to just be with carry you, on. <laughs> Beg God sometimes to be with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And even all when the all when the scripture ringing in our ears, in our ears. We just ask the Lord, just give me a couple of seconds. I have to vent. Yes. I have to express myself because me is Leo. <laughs> me is Scorpio. Me is King. Me is Lion. Mm -hmm. We all know it. But yes. when, we, when, when the rubber meets the road and we get into the situation and the human part of us is hurt, we don't remember anything about any flesh and blood that we are fighting. And we go after we go after flesh and blood and not spirits. I don't know why Sister Joy is laughing at me, you know, but <laughs> we, we have a conversation with her after. So, sir, some of these people were hurt, with, sir, we need to go to God and, and ask God to take out the spirit. <laughs> yeah, no, no, the thing is that, Staniki, yeah, it's, it's, the, the truth is that um, it's our, our human, we, we have to realize that as members of the body of Christ, we 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 are are reflectors of of the the life of Christ and what He does and how He does it. But there's a part of us that is called our humanness, and I'm not trying to excuse us. It is our reality, and we have to be able to um just put things in check. Just put things in check. Sir, I see a lot of things like it. I want to I want to just big up all my KT fans, right? I see them running out on Facebook. Big up yourself. <laughs> oh my God. So I know that I would get it with that one, you know. But you love me, so sorry, I cannot behave like that. <laughs> well, my love is very selective right now. The the human part of me is just saying that look here, that love the pump pause. <laughs> so I but sir, that that is, is are you saying that there is no point that a Christian then should draw a line to say I'm not not going to love this person anymore then? Because if you are saying that we should reflect Christ, that means say uh, we always have to be loving the person, so we can't draw the line. Well, Auntie Nikki may answer that question a long time ago. <laughs> no, we can't. Yeah, and and, and, and the is that, let me tell you something. The, the people who really it's hard hurt to... us the most. Are the ones who we love the close ones to you? Yeah. They said we can't draw the line. Jesus. Sister, sister, sister Esther said it. Said it right. Kill them with love. <laughs> Lord Jesus, sister Esther. Some of the time it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, sister Nikki, as she said that, you know, someone was giving us there is <laughs> there is two neighbors who are always at each other. One more than the other was always provoking. So, um, <laughs> you know, the Bible says that when you do these things, you will heap coal of fire on their heads. So there's a neighbor always provoking this other neighbor. And he went, you know, mow his lawn, cut his edge, and did some other things for him. So when they, 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 the antagonist came home and saw that the other one had mowed his lawn, cut his edge and stuff, he asked him why he did that. And he said to him, um, the Bible says, when I do these things, I will heap coals of fire on your head. And I want God to fry your brains. <laughs> so, but that is not it. Motive 
I, I, you all pray for me, saints. I need Jesus. Um, motive. I'm sorry. Why did I say that? <laughs> I'm still a Christian here, people. Um, yeah, but 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 just as was just as was um Sister Esther said, kill them with love because the truth is that you know people respond maybe not in your own time, but when you reflect Christ he will do the work on the other side. The unjust judge and the woman who kept coming doesn't regard man nor fear God. But after a while, he broke because of her consistency and how persistent she was. And maybe we can take that on in the love relationship. Thank you very much, Elder. I see so, earlier somebody mentioned 1 Corinthians 13 as it relates to love. Sir, what is your view as it relates anything from 1 Corinthians 13 that you would like to point out tonight as it relates to love? There's a, there's a, um, in essence, that is saying that love forgives. As challenging as it is, and just Nikki, straight up, a, a lot of these things are not very easy for a lot of us. And, and especially persons who are continuously and consistently um, hurt by other people, we become very caged yes. because we don't want to open ourselves and we don't want to become vulnerable, you know, but, but love forgives, real love forgives, real love forgives without condition. Yeah. Because when we think about the love that God has for us, think about the worst thing that anybody can do. And there are some things as human beings we write them down as unforgivable. There are some things as Christians that we have drawn line under that we will never forgive this. Yes. That's not what God says. And so in that particular scripture, it's not a definition for love. It is showing you how love performs. And it's not performance as in acting, but how love functions. That's the better word. This is what love does. It does not think evil. It does not keep an account of wrong. Me forgive you, but me now forget it. So every time I see you, me bring it up. And they're saying, no, that's not what love does. You know? Awesome. But, sir, uh, you know, persons always say that um, you're, you're forgiven, but you can never forget. Persons I mean, I mean it, if you take that from the basic meaning, memories don't live like people do. They always stay with you, whether they've been good or bad. I hope I'm not read out of the church for this, but it is <laughs> it is real. They don't, but you can choose to nurture that memory to the point of bitterness and unforgiveness. Or, because let me tell you something. Sometimes, you know, an account, if it is going to um, contribute to forward movement, is worth making mention of. If it is going to contribute to forward movement, because you would know, Auntie Nikki, as a driver, that sometimes in order to go forward, you have to reverse. Yes, if you're sir. in a tight spot where you are parked, you can't come out of it sometimes unless you try several reverse too, very tight. And, and you are reversing not because you are retarded. You are reversing because you're in a place that you need to get out of because you have to come to the elders meeting in St. Mary and somebody blocking you. So you have to reverse and get out there so you can get there on time. So you don't get the elder look according to one <laughs> member of my congregation. You understand what I'm saying? So it sometimes reversing becomes necessary, but reversing must not be rehearsal. Reversing must to move us forward. Amen. So Sister Wallace is saying that pride, she said pride this many relationships yeah. and still is. She pointed out that you mentioned that we must acknowledge, confess, repent, and reconcile. And you rightly said persons sometimes want to reconcile before they, eat, before they do anything else. Awesome. Sir, you left with us that love is action. Love is an action thing. It's not just saying. Love forgives. Love is a choice. 
So I choose to love. That's what you said, sir. Anything else you want to tell us before we, we, we start to wrap this thing up? But you know, sir, I wanted to share an ex experience. I, I wanted to share an experience with us. Have you ever been in a, in, a, in a situation where you found yourself, you know, you're showing persons with love and they're not giving it back to you? How did you deal with it? Turn off the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Lock it up. <laughs> Somebody says, see him so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know, the, 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 the truth is that you you must know um, if you are being abused, you must know if you are being used, and you must not subject yourself to that. I mean, I stand to be corrected, but that's that's me. Um, love reciprocates and um the, the people who are worth it, I know I can get in trouble for saying this, but um, you can show people with love, but um, not everybody's going to belong in a sphere for you to be doing that. And if you find, you must be able to distinguish whether you are being abused for doing that or you're being used. And um, one of the things that I have said is that the only person I will allow to use me in this life is Jesus, nobody else. I'm not giving anybody that power. So um, sometimes we are trying to force ourselves or force love upon persons who just can't reciprocate because God creates us with the capacity to love and to be loved. I see a long thing, I wish I could have read it. Um, the more you give love, the more you, they don't appreciate you. Well, look here now. Yeah, you, can go, yeah. you can go ahead and read it. Yeah, man. I think. Uh, Let me find. Um, I, I, I really the essence that you know about a relative and and the things that this person is trying to have that conversation with the person, and the more they try, the more it hurt. Um. The, 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 the thing is, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And God is able to change and to transform hearts. You know, we can't do it by ourselves. And sometimes our silence speaks louder in a situation like that. And silent doesn't mean that you're not having any kind of an interaction. But don't overtry. Because sometimes overtrying can <laughs> aggravate the situation. But they might be acts of love and acts of kindness. And after a while, you know, God, God changed hearts because he sees your heart. So, um, sir, what I, so it's not only about doing, but we have to ensure that we invite God in all of it. Yeah. Because we continue to do what we ought to do and then allow God to actually deal with the person. Because some of the times, you know, we get so caught up in, in the person, what the person is doing, that we ourselves stop doing what we are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful of that. All right. So we, I want to thank you guys for joining us on Transformation Thursday. Anything else, um, Elder, you want to share with us before we wrap it up? Anybody just, 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 one last, just one last thing, and it's a verse that I had here. And, and I think... Um, John said it very well in 1 John 4, 7 and 8, beloved. And, and I like that how he addresses the people of God. Let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. 1 John 4, 7 and 8, beloved. Let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. And I think from um, this, I, I'm, I'm quite sure, um, Auntie Nikki, that we have not touched everything that you would have wanted for us to touch, but you are keeping it within the confines of time, which I think is very good, and I commend that. Um, but... It's challenging. It's challenging to love sometimes. 
it's challenging, especially when you are coming up always hurt, you know? And, um, but we have hurt the Lord too in so many different ways. And he has made a choice to love us. Yes. So loving is a choice. And some things are difficult and challenging. But we can ask the Holy Spirit to help us. And it's not going to be an overnight wonder. It's not an abracadabra situation where it might happen after your first prayer. It might happen after several more hurt and disappointment. Ah. But if we ask you, will, Father, we are so very grateful that you have continued to love us. And in all honesty, when we reflect on our relationship with you, we recognize that by our action and our words many times, even though this is not what it looks like, we have moved away from loving you. We have loved ourselves more than we have loved you because we have sought to please ourselves more than walking in obedience to your word. We know what you say. We hear the instructions as we have read in your words. We hear it through the preaching of the word. We hear it through songs. Many times we circumvent and we excuse ourselves because how we feel is more important to us than what you have commissioned. We ask for your forgiveness, for knowing what you have said and making a choice to do what we want to do. Lord, we confess that we have hurt many persons. We have been knowledgeable of it, and some of which, Lord, is done in ignorance. And we have also been hurt by others. And sometimes it is challenging to forgive because the hurt runs so very deep. But you are the God of relationships. You are the God of restoration. You are Jehovah Rapha the Lord who heals. And Lord, healing for us is not just physical, but mental, emotional, spiritual, and other areas that have been exposed and is damaged. And so Lord, as we have looked at love, we have not touched everything that we'd want to. We just basically scratched the surface because this is a critical area in our lives where we are challenged. You have loved us with an everlasting love. One songwriter calls it a reckless love. It is a word and a term that many do not understand. But you are always coming after us, kicking down walls, tearing down lines, finding us hiding under our own pride, running into destruction, and you are coming after us, pulling us back. Lord, I pray that you will give us the capacity to love even those who have failed us in the worst ways. Give us a heart to forgive. Just as all you have forgiven us, we pray that so many times in what we call the Lord's Prayer, coming into contract with you, that you must forgive us only on the basis that we have forgiven others. And we still hold grudges and we have sectionalized what it is that we can and will forgive, and what we will hold on to for eternity. But I ask for you to help us, because you are able to override our own feelings and stubbornness, Lord, and you can cause us to reflect you as we relate. I pray for those who have been hurt, and those who are hurting. I pray for those who have hurt others, and continue to hurt them. We pray that your love will flood us, and because you are a God who is comprehensive in your dealing with mankind, you are able, oh God, to heal both offender and offended. And you are able to help us to overcome and to receive. Teach us how to acknowledge our wrongs. Teach us how to ask for forgiveness, not just from you, but from each other. Teach us how to accept forgiveness. Teach us how to offer forgiveness, teach us how to walk in love. We thank you for every person represented here on this platform. And we ask, Lord, that you will meet us at the greatest point of our needs and that your name will be exalted in our lives, especially those of us who know you as Lord and Savior. 
that we will reflect you in our action and attitude towards each other. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen to the amen. Amen, amen. Thank you very much, Elder, for showing me your love by coming on to the program this evening and to share with us. We certainly, again, will have to talk about love in a different sense, in a different aspect, so we can actually cover some more as it relates to love. Thanks, every, thanks to everyone who joined us on Facebook and the persons who came onto the Zoom platform. We thank you for joining. And guess what? We're going to do it again fourth Thursday next month. Join me, same time, same link, and we'll be here for Transformation Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone. God bless you.